A knight is a person granted an honorary title of knighthood by a monarch, bishop or other political leader for service to the monarch or a Christian church, especially in a military capacity. Historically, in Europe, knighthood was conferred upon mounted warriors. During the High Middle Ages, knighthood was considered a class of lower nobility. By the late Middle Ages, the rank had become associated with the ideals of chivalry, a code of conduct for the perfect courtly Christian warrior. Often, a knight was a vassal who served as an elite fighter, a bodyguard or a mercenary for a lord, with payment in the form of land holdings. The lords trusted the knights, who were skilled in battle on horseback. Knighthood in the Middle Ages was closely linked with horsemanship and especially the joust from its origins in the 12th century until its final flowering as a fashion among the high nobility in the Duchy of Burgundy in the 15th century. This linkage is reflected in the etymology of chivalry, cavalier and related terms see etymology section below. The special prestige accorded to mounted warriors in Christendom finds a parallel in the Ferrucia in the Muslim world, and the Greek Hippias, Hippias and Roman equi of classical antiquity. In the late medieval period, new methods of warfare began to render classical knights in armor obsolete, but the titles remained in many nations. Today, a number of orders of knighthood continue to exist in Christian churches, as well as in several historically Christian countries and their former territories, such as the Roman Catholic Order of the Holy Sepulchre, the Protestant Order of St. John, as well as the English Order of the Garter, the Swedish Royal Order of the Seraphim, and the Royal Norwegian Order of St. Olav. Each of these orders has its own criteria for eligibility, but knighthood is generally granted by a head of state, monarch, or prelate to selected persons to recognize some meritorious achievement, as in the British honours system, often for service to the church or country. The modern female equivalent in the United Kingdom is Dame. Historically, the ideals of chivalry were popularized in medieval literature, particularly the literary cycles known as the Matter of France, relating to the legendary companions of Charlemagne, and the Matter of Britain, relating to the legend of King Arthur. Etymology <inaudible> <inaudible> The word knight, from Old English cnicht, boy, or servant, is a cognate of the German word necht. Servant, bondsman, vassal. This meaning, of unknown origin, is common among West Germanic languages cf. Old Frisian Nyust, Dutch Necht, Danish Neekt, Swedish Knekt, Norwegian Knekt, Middle High German Kneht, all meaning, boy, youth, lad. Middle High German had the phrase Gwoder Kneht, which also meant knight, but this meaning was in decline by about 1200. The meaning of Kniht changed over time from its original meaning of boy to household retainer. Eilfric's homily of St. Swithin describes a mounted retainer as a Kniht. While Cenotas might have fought alongside their lords, their role as household servants features more prominently in the Anglo Saxon texts. In several Anglo-Saxon wills Cenotas are left either money or lands. In his will, King Æthelstan leaves his Cniht, Eilfmar, eight hides of land, a radsnit, riding servant, was a servant delivering messages or patrolling coastlines on horseback, a narrowing of the generic meaning, servant, to military follower of a king or other superior, is visible by 1100. The specific military sense of a knight as a mounted warrior in the heavy cavalry emerges only in the Hundred Years' War. The verb, to knight, to make someone a knight, appears around 1300, and, from the same time, the word, knighthood, shifted from, adolescence, to, rank or dignity of a knight. An equestrian, Latin, from equi, horseman, from equus, horse was a member of the second highest social class in the Roman Republic and early Roman Empire. This class is often translated as knight. The medieval knight, however, was called miles in Latin which in classical Latin meant soldier, normally infantry. In the later Roman Empire, the classical Latin word for horse, equus, was replaced in common parlance by the vulgar Latin caballus, sometimes thought to derive from Gaulish caballos. From Caballus arose terms in the various Romance languages cognate with the French-derived, English cavalier, Italian cavalier, Spanish caballero, French chevalier when chivalry, Portuguese cavalero, and Romanian cavalier. The Germanic languages have terms cognate with the English rider, German ritter, and Dutch and Scandinavian ritter. These words are derived from Germanic riden, to ride, in turn derived from the Proto-Indo-European root re. 
Topic: <inaudible> Evolution of medieval knighthood. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Pre-Carolingian legacies. In ancient Rome, there was a knightly class, Ordo Equestris, Order of Mounted Nobles. Some portions of the armies of Germanic peoples who occupied Europe from the 3rd century AD onward had been mounted, and some armies, such as those of the Ostrogoths, were mainly cavalry. However, it was the Franks who generally fielded armies composed of large masses of infantry, with an infantry elite, the Comitatus, which often rode to battle on horseback rather than marching on foot. When the armies of the Frankish ruler Charles Martel defeated the Umayyad Arab invasion at the Battle of Tours in 732, the Frankish forces were still largely infantry armies, with elites riding to battle but dismounting to fight. Carolingian <inaudible> age <inaudible> In the early medieval period any well-equipped horseman could be described as a knight, or miles in Latin. The first knights appeared during the reign of Charlemagne in the 8th century. As the Carolingian age progressed, the Franks were generally on the attack, and larger numbers of warriors took to their horses to ride with the emperor in his wide-ranging campaigns of conquest. At about this time the Franks increasingly remained on horseback to fight on the battlefield as true cavalry rather than mounted infantry, with the discovery of the stirrup, and would continue to do so for centuries afterwards. Although in some nations the knight returned to foot combat in the 14th century, the association of the knight with mounted combat with a spear, and later a lance, remained a strong one. The older Carolingian ceremony of presenting a young man with weapons influenced the emergence of knighthood ceremonies, in which a noble would be ritually given weapons and declared to be a knight, usually amid some festivities. These mobile mounted warriors made Charlemagne's far flung conquests possible, and to secure their service, he rewarded them with grants of land called benefices. These were given to the captains directly by the emperor to reward their efforts in the conquests, and they in turn were to grant benefices to their warrior contingents, who were a mix of free and unfree men. In the century or so following Charlemagne's death, his newly empowered warrior class grew stronger still, and Charles the Bald declared their fiefs to be hereditary. The period of chaos in the 9th and 10th centuries, between the fall of the Carolingian central authority and the rise of separate western and eastern Frankish kingdoms later to become France and Germany respectively only entrenched this newly landed warrior class. This was because governing power and defense against Viking, Magyar and Saracen attack became an essentially local affair which revolved around these new hereditary local lords and their demesnes. Crusades. In the course of the 12th century knighthood became a social rank, with a distinction being made between Milites Gregory cavalrymen and Milites Nobiles true knights. As the term, knight, became increasingly confined to denoting a social rank, the military role of fully armoured cavalrymen gained a separate term, man-at-arms. Although any medieval knight going to war would automatically serve as a man-at-arms, not all men-at-arms were knights. The first military orders of knighthood were those of the Knights Hospitallers and of the Holy Sepulchre, both founded at the First Crusade of 1099, followed by the Order of St. Lazarus 1100, Knights Templars 1118, and the Teutonic Knights 1190. At the time of their foundation, these were intended as monastic orders, whose members would act as simple soldiers protecting pilgrims. It was only over the following century, with the successful conquest of the Holy Land and the rise of the Crusader states, that these orders became powerful and prestigious. The great European legends of warriors such as the Paladins, the Matter of France and the Matter of Britain popularized the notion of chivalry among the warrior class. The ideal of chivalry is the ethos of the Christian warrior, and the transmutation of the term, knight, from the meaning, servant, soldier, and of chevalier, mounted soldier. To refer to a member of this ideal class, is significantly influenced by the Crusades, on one hand inspired by the military orders of monastic warriors, and on the other hand also cross-influenced by Islamic Saracen ideals of Ferrucia. Knightly culture in the Middle Ages Training The institution of knights was already well established by the 10th century. While the knight was essentially a title denoting a military office, the term could also be used for positions of higher nobility such as landholders. 
The higher nobles grant the vassals their portions of land fiefs in return for their loyalty, protection, and service. The nobles also provided their knights with necessities, such as lodging, food, armor, weapons, horses, and money. The knight generally held his lands by military tenure which was measured through military service that usually lasted 40 days a year. The military service was the quid pro quo for each knight's fief. Vassals and lords could maintain any number of knights, although knights with more military experience were those most sought after. Thus, all petty nobles intending to become prosperous knights needed a great deal of military experience. A knight fighting under another's banner was called a knight bachelor while a knight fighting under his own banner was a knight banneret. Page A knight had to be born of nobility, typically sons of knights or lords. In some cases commoners could also be knighted as a reward for extraordinary military service. Children of the nobility were cared for by noble foster mothers in castles until they reached age seven. The seven-year-old boys were given the title of page and turned over to the care of the castle's lords. They were placed on an early training regime of hunting with huntsmen and falconers, and academic studies with priests or chaplains. Pages then become assistants to older knights in battle, carrying and cleaning armor, taking care of the horses, and packing the baggage. They would accompany the knights on expeditions, even into foreign lands. Older pages were instructed by knights in swordsmanship, equestrianism, chivalry, warfare, and combat, but using wooden swords and spears. Topic. Squire When the boy turned 15, he became a squire. In a religious ceremony, the new squire swore on a sword consecrated by a bishop or priest, and attended to assigned duties in his lord's household. During this time the squires continued training in combat and were allowed to own armor rather than borrowing it. Squires were required to master the seven points of agilities riding, swimming and diving, shooting different types of weapons, climbing, participation in tournaments, wrestling, fencing, long jumping, and dancing, the prerequisite skills for knighthood. All of these were even performed while wearing armor. Upon turning 21, the squire was eligible to be knighted. Topic: Accolade. The accolade or knighting ceremony was usually held during one of the great feasts or holidays, like Christmas or Easter, and sometimes at the wedding of a noble or royal. The knighting ceremony usually involved a ritual bath on the eve of the ceremony and a prayer vigil during the night. On the day of the ceremony, the would-be knight would swear an oath and the master of the ceremony would dub the new knight on the shoulders with a sword. Squires, and even soldiers, could also be conferred direct knighthood early if they showed valor and efficiency for their service. Such acts may include deploying for an important quest or mission, or protecting a high diplomat or a royal relative in battle. Topic. Chivalric Code Knights were expected, above all, to fight bravely and to display military professionalism and courtesy. When knights were taken as prisoners of war, they were customarily held for ransom in somewhat comfortable surroundings. This same standard of conduct did not apply to non-knights archers, peasants, foot soldiers, etc. who were often slaughtered after capture, and who were viewed during battle as mere impediments to knights getting to other knights to fight them. Chivalry developed as an early standard of professional ethics for knights, who were relatively affluent horse owners and were expected to provide military services in exchange for landed property. Early notions of chivalry entailed loyalty to one's liege lord and bravery in battle, similar to the values of the heroic age. During the Middle Ages, this grew from simple military professionalism into a social code including the values of gentility, nobility and treating others reasonably. In the Song of Roland c. 1100, Roland is portrayed as the ideal knight, demonstrating unwavering loyalty, military prowess and social fellowship. In Wolfram von Eschenbach's Parzival c. 1205, chivalry had become a blend of religious duties, love and military service. Ramon Lull's Book of the Order of Chivalry 1275 demonstrates that by the end of the 13th century, chivalry entailed a litany of very specific duties, including riding warhorses, jousting, attending tournaments, holding round tables and hunting, as well as aspiring to the more ethereal virtues of faith, hope, charity, justice, strength, moderation and loyalty. 
Knights of the late medieval era were expected by society to maintain all these skills and many more, as outlined in Baldassare Castiglione's The Book of the Courtier, though the book's protagonist, Count Ludovico, states the first and true profession of the ideal courtier must be that of arms. Chivalry, derived from the French word chevalier cavalier, simultaneously denoted skilled horsemanship and military service, and these remained the primary occupations of knighthood throughout the Middle Ages. Chivalry and religion were mutually influenced during the period of the Crusades. The early Crusades helped to clarify the moral code of chivalry as it related to religion. As a result, Christian armies began to devote their efforts to sacred purposes. As time passed, clergy instituted religious vows which required knights to use their weapons chiefly for the protection of the weak and defenseless, especially women and orphans, and of churches. Tournaments In peacetime, knights often demonstrated their martial skills in tournaments, which usually took place on the grounds of a castle. Knights can parade their armor and banner to the whole court as the tournament commenced. Medieval tournaments were made up of martial sports called hasteludes, and were not only a major spectator sport but also played as a real combat simulation. It usually ended with many knights either injured or even killed. One contest was a free-for-all battle called a melee, where large groups of knights numbering hundreds assembled and fought one another, and the last knight standing was the winner. The most popular and romanticized contest for knights was the joust. In this competition, two knights charge each other with blunt wooden lances in an effort to break their lance on the opponent's head or body or unhorse them completely. The loser in these tournaments had to turn his armor and horse over to the victor. The last day was filled with feasting, dancing and minstrel singing. Besides formal tournaments, they were also unformalized judicial duels done by knights and squires to end various disputes. Countries like Germany, Britain and Ireland practiced this tradition. Judicial combat was of two forms in medieval society, the feat of arms and chivalric combat. The feat of arms were done to settle hostilities between two large parties and supervised by a judge. The chivalric combat was fought when one party's honor was disrespected or challenged upon in which the conflict cannot be resolved in court. Weapons were standardized and must be of the same caliber. The duel lasted until the other party was too weak to fight back and in early cases, the defeated party were then subsequently executed. Examples of these brutal duels were the judicial combat known as the Combat of the Thirty in 1351, and the trial by combat fought by Jean de Carouges in 1386. A far more chivalric duel which became popular in the late Middle Ages was the pas d'arme or passage of arms. In this hastelude, a knight or a group of knights would claim a bridge, lane or city gate, and challenge other passing knights to fight or be disgraced. If a lady passed unescorted, she would leave behind a glove or scarf, to be rescued and returned to her by a future knight who passed that way. Topic. Heraldry One of the greatest distinguishing marks of the knightly class was the flying of colored banners, to display power and to distinguish knights in battle and in tournaments. Knights are generally armigerous bearing a coat of arms, and indeed they played an essential role in the development of heraldry. As heavier armor, including enlarged shields and enclosed helmets, developed in the Middle Ages, the need for marks of identification arose, and with colored shields and surcoats, coat armory was born. Armorial roles were created to record the knights of various regions or those who participated in various tournaments. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Medieval and Renaissance chivalric literature. Knights and the ideals of knighthood featured largely in medieval and Renaissance literature and have secured a permanent place in literary romance. While chivalric romances abound, particularly notable literary portrayals of knighthood include The Song of Roland, Cantar de Mio Cid, The Twelve of England, Geoffrey Chaucer's The Knight's Tale, Baldassare Castiglione's The Book of the Courtier, and Miguel de Cervantes' Don Quixote, as well as Sir Thomas Mallory's La Morte d'Arthur and other Arthurian tales Geoffrey of Monmouth's Historia Regum Britanniae, the Pearl Poet Sir Gawain and the Green Knight, etc. Geoffrey of Monmouth's Historia Regum Britanniae, History of the Kings of Britain, written in the 1130s, introduced the legend of King Arthur, which was to be important to the development of chivalric ideals in literature. 
Sir Thomas Mallory's La Morte d'Arthur written in 1485, was important in defining the ideal of chivalry, which is essential to the modern concept of the knight, as an elite warrior sworn to uphold the values of faith, loyalty, courage, and honor. Instructional literature was also created. Geoffroy de Charna's Book of Chivalry expounded upon the importance of Christian faith in every area of a knight's life, though still laying stress on the primarily military focus of knighthood. In the early Renaissance greater emphasis is laid upon courtliness. The ideal courtier—the chivalrous knight—of Baldessari Castiglione's The Book of the Courtier became a model of the ideal virtues of nobility. Castiglione's tale took the form of a discussion among the nobility of the court of the Duke of Urbino, in which the characters determined that the ideal knight should be renowned not only for his bravery and prowess in battle, but also as a skilled dancer, athlete, singer and orator, and he should also be well read in the humanities and classical Greek and Latin literature. Later Renaissance literature, such as Miguel de Cervantes' Don Quixote, rejected the code of chivalry as unrealistic idealism. The rise of Christian humanism in Renaissance literature demonstrated a marked departure from the chivalric romance of late medieval literature, and the chivalric ideal ceased to influence literature over successive centuries until it saw some pockets of revival in post-Victorian literature. Decline <inaudible> 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 By the end of the 15th century, knights were becoming obsolete as countries started creating their own professional armies that were quicker to train, cheaper and easier to mobilize. The advancement of high-powered firearms eradicated the use of plate armor, as the time it took to train soldiers with guns was much less compared to that of the knight. The cost of equipment was also significantly lower, and guns had a reasonable chance to easily penetrate a knight's armor. In the 14th century the use of infantrymen armed with pikes and fighting in close formation also proved effective against heavy cavalry, such as during the Battle of Nancy, when Charles the Bold and his armoured cavalry were decimated by Swiss pikemen. As the feudal system came to an end, lords saw no further use of knights. Many landowners found the duties of knighthood too expensive and so contented themselves with the use of squires. Mercenaries also became an economic alternative to knights when conflicts arose. Armies of the time started adopting a more realistic approach to warfare than the honor-bound code of chivalry. Soon, the remaining knights were absorbed into professional armies. Although they had a higher rank than most soldiers because of their valuable lineage, they lost their distinctive identity that previously set them apart from common soldiers. As the age of knights dissolved, some still survived as knightly orders who still exist even by the end of the medieval age. They adopted newer technology while still retaining their age-old chivalric traditions. Examples of holy orders that existed beyond the Middle Ages were the Knights Hospitallers and Teutonic Knights. <laughs> Topic. Types of knighthood Topic. Chivalric orders Topic. Military orders Sovereign Military Order of Malta, founded during the First Crusade, 1099 Order of the Holy Sepulchre, also founded during the First Crusade in circa 1099 Order of Saint Lazarus established about 1100 Knights Templar, founded 1118, disbanded 1307 Teutonic Knights, established about 1190, and ruled the monastic state of the Teutonic Knights in Prussia until 1525 other orders were established in the Iberian Peninsula, under the influence of the orders in the Holy Land and the Crusader movement of the Reconquista. Order of Avis, established in Avis in 1143 Order of Alcantara, established in Alcantara in 1156 Order of Calatrava, established in Calatrava in 1158 Order of Santiago, established in Santiago in 1164. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Honorific Orders of Knighthood. After the Crusades, the military orders became idealized and romanticized, resulting in the late medieval notion of chivalry, as reflected in the Arthurian romances of the time. The creation of chivalric orders was fashionable among the nobility in the 14th and 15th centuries, and this is still reflected in contemporary honors systems, including the term order itself. Examples of notable orders of chivalry are The Order of St. George, founded by Charles I of Hungary in 1325 6 
The Order of the Most Holy Annunciation, founded by Count Amadeus VI in 1346. The Order of the Garter, founded by Edward III of England around 1348. The Order of the Dragon, founded by King Sigismund of Luxembourg in 1408. The Order of the Golden Fleece, founded by Philip III, Duke of Burgundy in 1430. The Order of Saint Michael, founded by Louis XI of France in 1469. The Order of the Thistle, founded by King James VII of Scotland, also known as James II of England in 1687. The Order of the Elephant, which may have been first founded by Christian I of Denmark, but was founded in its current form by King Christian V in 1693. The Order of the Bath, founded by George I in 1725. From roughly 1560, purely honorific orders were established, as a way to confer prestige and distinction, unrelated to military service and chivalry in the more narrow sense. Such orders were particularly popular in the 17th and 18th centuries, and knighthood continues to be conferred in various countries. The United Kingdom see British Honours System and some Commonwealth of Nations countries such as New Zealand. Some European countries, such as the Netherlands and Belgium see below. The Holy See. See Papal Orders of Chivalry. There are other monarchies and also republics that also follow this practice. Modern knighthoods are typically conferred in recognition for services rendered to society, which are not necessarily martial in nature. The British musician Elton John, for example, is a knight bachelor, thus entitled to be called Sir Elton. The female equivalent is a dame, for example Dame Julie Andrews. In the United Kingdom, honorific knighthood may be conferred in two different ways. The first is by membership of one of the pure orders of chivalry such as the Order of the Garter, the Order of the Thistle and the Dormant Order of St. Patrick, of which all members are knighted. In addition, many British orders of merit, namely the Order of the Bath, the Order of St. Michael and St. George, the Royal Victorian Order and the Order of the British Empire are part of the British Honours System, and the award of their highest ranks Knight, Dame Commander and Knight, Dame Grand Cross, comes together with an honorific knighthood, making them a cross between orders of chivalry and orders of merit. By contrast, membership of other British orders of merit, such as the Distinguished Service Order, the Order of Merit and the Order of the Companions of Honour does not confer a knighthood. The second is being granted honorific knighthood by the British sovereign without membership of an order, the recipient being called Knight Bachelor. In the British Honours system the knightly style of Sir is accompanied by the given name, and optionally the surname. So, Elton John may be called Sir Elton or Sir Elton John, but never Sir John. Similarly, actress Judy Dench DBE may be addressed as Dame Judy or Dame Judy Dench, but never Dame Dench. Wives of knights, however, are entitled to the honorific pre-nominal lady before their husband's surname. Thus Sir Paul McCartney's ex-wife was formally styled Lady McCartney rather than Lady Paul McCartney or Lady Heather McCartney. The style Dame Heather McCartney could be used for the wife of a knight, however, this style is largely archaic and is only used in the most formal of documents, or where the wife is a dame in her own right such as Dame Norma Major, who gained her title six years before her husband Sir John Major was knighted. The husbands of dames have no honorific pre-nominal, so Dame Norma's husband remained John Major until he received his own knighthood. Since the reign of Edward VII a clerk in holy orders in the Church of England has not normally received the accolade on being appointed to a degree of knighthood. He receives the insignia of his honour and may place the appropriate letters after his name or title but he may not be called Sir and his wife may not be called Lady. This custom is not observed in Australia and New Zealand, where knighted Anglican clergymen routinely use the title, Sir. Ministers of other Christian churches are entitled to receive the accolade. For example, Sir Norman Cardinal Gilroy did receive the accolade on his appointment as Knight Commander of the Most Excellent Order of the British Empire in 1969. A knight who is subsequently ordained does not lose his title. A famous example of this situation was the REVD Sir Derek Pattinson, who was ordained just a year after he was appointed Knight Bachelor, apparently somewhat to the consternation of officials at Buckingham Palace. A woman clerk in holy orders may be made a dame in exactly the same way as any other woman since there are no military connotations attached to the honour. A clerk in holy orders who is a baronet is entitled to use the title sir. Outside the British honours system it is usually considered improper to address a knighted person as sir or dame. 
Some countries, however, historically did have equivalent honorifics for knights, such as Cavalier in Italy e.g. Cavalier Benito Mussolini, and Ritter in Germany and the Austro-Hungarian Empire e.g. Georg Ritter von Trapp. State knighthoods in the Netherlands are issued in three orders, the Order of William, the Order of the Netherlands Lion, and the Order of Orange Nassau. Additionally there remain a few hereditary knights in the Netherlands. In Belgium, honorific knighthood not hereditary can be conferred by the king on particularly meritorious individuals such as scientists or eminent businessmen, or for instance to astronaut Frank de Wynn, the second Belgian in space. This practice is similar to the conferral of the dignity of Knight Bachelor in the United Kingdom. In addition, there still are a number of hereditary knights in Belgium see below. In France and Belgium, one of the ranks conferred in some orders of merit, such as the Légion d'honneur, the Ordre National du Mérite, the Ordre des Palmes Académiques and the Ordre des Arts et des Lettres in France, and the Order of Leopold, Order of the Crown and Order of Leopold II in Belgium, is that of Chevalier in French or Ritter in Dutch, meaning knight. In the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth the monarchs tried to establish chivalric orders but the hereditary lords who controlled the union did not agree and managed to ban such assemblies. They feared the king would use orders to gain support for absolutist goals and to make formal distinctions among the peerage which could lead to its legal breakup into two separate classes, and that the king would later play one against the other and eventually limit the legal privileges of hereditary nobility. But finally in 1705 King August II managed to establish the Order of the White Eagle which remains Poland's most prestigious order of that kind. The head of state now the president as the acting Grand Master confers knighthoods of the order to distinguished citizens, foreign monarchs and other heads of state. The order has its chapter. There were no particular honorifics that would accompany a knight's name as historically all or at least by far most its members would be royals or hereditary lords anyway. So today, a knight is simply referred to as name surname, Knight of the White Eagle Order. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Hereditary knighthoods. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Continental Europe. In continental Europe, different systems of hereditary knighthood have existed or do exist. Ritter, Dutch for knight is a hereditary noble title in the Netherlands. It is the lowest title within the nobility system and ranks below that of Baron, but above Jonkheer. The latter is not a title, but a Dutch honorific to show that someone belongs to the untitled nobility. The collective term for its holders in a certain locality is the Ritterschap e.g. Ritterschap van Holland, Ritterschap van Friesland, etc. In the Netherlands no female equivalent exists. Before 1814, the history of nobility is separate for each of the eleven provinces that make up the Kingdom of the Netherlands. In each of these, there were in the early Middle Ages a number of feudal lords who often were just as powerful, and sometimes more so than the rulers themselves. In old times, no other title existed but that of knight. In the Netherlands only ten knightly families are still extant, a number which steadily decreases because in that country a nobleman or incorporation into the nobility is not possible anymore. Likewise Ritter, Dutch for knight, or the equivalent French chevalier is a hereditary noble title in Belgium. It is the second lowest title within the nobility system above Akeir or Jonkier, Jonkvrouw and below Baron. Like in the Netherlands, no female equivalent to the title exists. Belgium still does have about 232 registered knightly families. The German and Austrian equivalent of an hereditary knight is a Ritter. This designation is used as a title of nobility in all German-speaking areas. Traditionally it denotes the second lowest rank within the nobility, standing above Edler noble, and below Freiherr baron. For its historical association with warfare and the landed gentry in the Middle Ages, it can be considered roughly equal to the titles of knight or baronet. The Royal House of Portugal historically bestowed hereditary knighthoods to holders of the highest ranks in the royal orders. Today, the head of the Royal House of Portugal H.R.H. Duarte Pio, Duke of Braganza bestows hereditary knighthoods for extraordinary acts of sacrifice and service to the Royal House. There are very few hereditary knights and they are entitled to wear a breast star with the crest of the House of Braganza. In France, the hereditary knighthood existed in regions formerly under Holy Roman Empire control. 
One family ennobled with that title is the House of Hoke Clock by letters patents of 1752, even if its most recent members used a pontifical title of count. Italy and Poland also had the hereditary knighthood that existed within the nobility system. <inaudible> Ireland There are traces of the continental system of hereditary knighthood in Ireland. Notably all three of the following belong to the Hiberno-Norman Fitzgerald dynasty, created by the Earls of Desmond, acting as Earls Palatine, for their kinsmen. Knight of Kerry or Green Knight Fitzgerald of Kerry. The current holder is Sir Adrian Fitzgerald, 6th Baronet of Valencia, 24th Knight of Kerry. He is also a Knight of Malta, and has served as President of the Irish Association of the Sovereign Military Order of Malta. Knight of Glynn or Black Knight Fitzgerald of Limerick now dormant. White Knight see Edmund Fitzgibbon. Now dormant, another Irish family were the O'Shaughnessys, who were created knights in 1553 under the policy of surrender and regrant first established by Henry VIII of England. They were attainted in 1697 for participation on the Jacobite side in the Williamite Wars. <laughs> British baronetcies Since 1611, the British Crown has awarded a hereditary title in the form of the baronetcy. Like knights, baronets are accorded the title Sir. Baronets are not peers of the realm, and have never been entitled to sit in the House of Lords, therefore like knights they remain commoners in the view of the British legal system. However, unlike knights, the title is hereditary and the recipient does not receive an accolade. The position is therefore more comparable with hereditary knighthoods in continental European orders of nobility, such as Ritter, than with knighthoods under the British orders of chivalry. However, unlike the continental orders, the British baronetcy system was a modern invention, designed specifically to raise money for the crown with the purchase of the title. <laughs> <laughs> Women in orders of knighthood <laughs> England and the United Kingdom Women were appointed to the Order of the Garter almost from the start. In all, 68 women were appointed between 1358 and 1488, including all consorts. Though many were women of royal blood, or wives of Knights of the Garter, some women were neither. They wore the garter on the left arm, and some are shown on their tombstones with this arrangement. After 1488, no other appointments of women are known, although it is said that the garter was conferred upon Neapolitan poet Laura Baccio Terracina, by King Edward VI. In 1638, a proposal was made to revive the use of robes for the wives of knights in ceremonies, but this did not occur. Queen's consort have been made ladies of the garter since 1901 Queen's Alexandra in 1901, Mary in 1910 and Elizabeth in 1937. The first non-royal woman to be made Lady Companion of the Garter was the Duchess of Norfolk in 1990, the second was the Baroness Thatcher in 1995 post-nominal, LG. On 30 November 1996, Lady Fraser was made Lady of the Thistle, the first non-royal woman post-nominal, LT, see Edmund Fellows, Knights of the Garter, 1939, and Belts, Memorials of the Order of the Garter. The first woman to be granted a knighthood in modern Britain seems to have been H. H. Nawab Sikandar Begum Sahiba, Nawab Begum of Bhopal, who became a Knight Grand Commander of the Order of the Star of India in 1861, at the foundation of the order. Her daughter received the same honour in 1872, as well as her granddaughter in 1910. The order was open to princes and chiefs, without distinction of gender. The first European woman to have been granted an order of knighthood was Queen Mary, when she was made a knight grand commander of the same order, by special statute, in celebration of the Delhi Durbar of 1911. She was also granted a damehood in 1917 as a Dame Grand Cross. When the Order of the British Empire was created, it was the first order explicitly open to women. The Royal Victorian Order was opened to women in 1936, and the Orders of the Bath and St. Michael and St. George in 1965 and 1971 respectively. <laughs> France Medieval French had two words, chevaleresse and chevalier, which were used in two ways, one was for the wife of a knight, and this usage goes back to the 14th century. The other was possibly for a female knight. Here is a quote from Menestrier, a 17th-century writer on chivalry. 
it was not always necessary to be the wife of a knight in order to take this title. Sometimes, when some male fiefs were conceded by special privilege to women, they took the rank of chevaleress, as one sees plainly in Hemrecourt where women who were not wives of knights are called chevaleresses. Modern French orders of knighthood include women, for example the Légion d'honneur since the mid-19th century, but they are usually called chevaliers. The first documented case is that of Angelique Brulin (1772–1859), who fought in the Revolutionary Wars, received a military disability pension in 1798, the rank of second lieutenant in 1822, and the Legion of Honor in 1852. A recipient of the Ordre National du Mérite recently requested from the Order's Chancery the permission to call herself Chevalier, and the request was granted. AFP Dispatch, January 28, 2000. Italy As related in Orders of Knighthood, Awards and the Holy See by H. E. Cardinali 1983, the Order of the Blessed Virgin Mary was founded by two Bolognese nobles Lodoringo degli Andalo and Catalano di Guido in 1233, and approved by Pope Alexander IV in 1261. It was the first religious order of knighthood to grant the rank of militisa to women. However, this order was suppressed by Sixtus V in 1558. Topic: The Low Countries. At the initiative of Catherine Baugh in 1441, and ten years later of Elizabeth, Mary, and Isabella of the House of Horns, orders were founded which were open exclusively to women of noble birth, who received the French title of Chevalier or the Latin title of Equitisa. In his Glossarium S. V. Militisa, Du Conge notes that still in his day 17th century, the female canons of the canonical monastery of St. Gertrude in Nivelles Brabant, after a probation of three years, are made knights Militisse at the altar, by a male knight called in for that purpose, who gives them the accolade with a sword and pronounces the usual words. <laughs> Spain To honor those women who defended Tortosa against an attack by the Moors, Ramon Berenguer IV, Count of Barcelona, created the Order of the Hatchet in 1149. The inhabitants of Tortosa being at length reduced to great straits, desired relief of the Earl, but he, being not in a condition to give them any, they entertained some thoughts of making a surrender. Which the women hearing of, to prevent the disaster threatening their city, themselves, and children, put on men's clothes, and by a resolute sally, forced the Moors to raise the siege. The Earl, finding himself obliged, by the gallantry of the action, thought fit to make his acknowledgments thereof, by granting them several privileges and immunities, and to perpetuate the memory of so signal an attempt, instituted an order, somewhat like a military order, into which were admitted only those brave women, deriving the honour to their descendants, and assigned them for a badge, a thing like a friar's capuche, sharp at the top, after the form of a torch, and of a crimson colour, to be worn upon their head clothes. He also ordained, that at all public meetings, the women should have precedence of the men. That they should be exempted from all taxes, and that all the apparel and jewels, though of never so great value, left by their dead husbands, should be their own. These women having thus acquired this honor by their personal valor, carried themselves after the military knights of those days. <laughs> Notable knights See also Topic. Counterparts in other cultures Topic. Notes Topic. References, <references>